In a previous episode, I was scanning negatives from a wedding that I took 25 years ago. And what I want to do now is I want to create a DVD uh, box so that I can make a disc and send the, the images to them as a gift. Now, I know in this day, day and age that it's a lot easier to you know, either do images as downloads or provide them on a flash drive. But with things like weddings, I kind of feel that people want a physical product, something that, that looks nice and it has a physical size to it. And I don't kind of feel that you know, when you make flash drives, there's any really good way at the moment of presenting them in a nice way. So I still like to do things on disk. If people want stuff on USB drives, I'll per definitely do that. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cover to fit inside a standard sized DVD box. Um, if you want to skip forward to the point where I'm actually making the cover itself, I'll put the time on the screen now and that will put you right at the time when we're actually making the DVD cover. But for the time being, first thing I'm going to do is I want an image that I'm going to put onto the cover of the DVD. So I've chosen this one of the bride and groom. And what I like to do is have a nice black and white image against a white background. And we can see here that they're standing against uh, some, some trees and bushes. So I want to kind of remove that background and have them standing against a white background. So the first thing I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to duplicate it. So Control and J on your keyboard to duplicate the image. And now we've got two layers. I'm going to go back to the background layer here and select that. And I'm going to go to the bottom of the screen here. And on the little folded paper icon here, I'm going to click and that says create new layer. Now what I'm going to do with that is I'm actually going to fill that with white. So I come across to edit at the top. In the drop down list here we have fill and we've got uh, options here. At the moment it's on foreground color but I'm going to drop down there and at the bottom we have white. So I'm going to click OK and now if I turn that top layer off you can see we've got a white blank layer sitting between the two copy layers that we have there. So I'm going to use this top layer now to mask out the areas that I don't want so they'll show through as white. So the first thing I'm going to do is just do a really rough selection around the couple to get rid of the majority of what we've got here. Um, there's a couple of tools you could use. I'm actually going to use the uh, polygonal lasso tool here just because it's easier and sometimes with the standard lasso tool you can... Uh, miss your place and end up doing a whole lot of selections that then jumps out so I'm just going to really roughly go around the outside of them here now just leaving a little border on the edge Okay, so we're coming back around to where we began, and as I join the two lines up, you'll get a little circle there which says you're hitting the, the mark there. Touch that. And now you can see we've got the marching ants completely around the outside of them. What I'm going to do now is go on to make sure I'm on the top layer here, and I'm going to add a layer mask. First thing I'm going to do is reset my forward background colors here. So I press D on the keyboard, and that gives us the standard black and white. So I've got the marching ants around the couple. I'm now going to go here to the bottom, the little uh, square with a circle in it, rectangle with a circle. Click that, and that's going to give me a layer mask. And you can see now what that's done is it's just masked out the area outside of where I was working on. Now what I'm going to do is use this layer mask to define this closer in. So what I'm going to do is let's go for our zoom tool, and we'll zoom in closer around the couple like that. Next thing I need to do is press B on the keyboard and bring up my brush tool. I need to make sure that my background and foreground colors on this side are black on the foreground, white on the background. And because we've got a layer mask here, if we're using the black color with the brush tool, that will um, add to the layer mask. If we're using white, that will take away from the layer mask. So let's bring my brush size up a little bit. I'm just using the, the uh, square bracket keys on your keyboard here. If you, if you use the left hand bracket key it will decrease the brush size if you use the right hand bracket key it will increase it so let's start now what I'm going to do is just use this just to bring in nice and close to the edge of the dress I'm using a fairly soft edge brush here 
And again, because the use is there, I, I, this isn't going to, you know, I don't want this to be an absolute perfect cutout. Just something that will work on, on the size of a DVD cover. You'll see when we finish exactly how it will look. But you can see there, just being very careful with the brush tool, that we can actually get in quite close and get some quite nice detail there. So let me just carry on doing this. And what I like to do when it comes to tricky areas like this is I like to go a bit further than need be. And then press X on my keyboard, which switches it back and just reveal back the areas that we want. Go. So if I continue doing this now, and we'll come back at the end, I'm basically going to go around the entire image just very carefully masking out anything that's not the couple. So I'll carry on doing that and we'll come back when I'm finished. So there we go, I've basically gone around the entire image now, I've just got the last little bit to do here and, and just, as I said, using the brush tool with a very soft edge just to mask out around the couple. And again, what I'm doing is I'm using the, the X key on the keyboard to flick between the uh, black and white foreground and background colours. So if I accidentally mask out over the dress like that, if I press X and bring white to the foreground colour, I can bring that back in. Now I'll put the edge back in, so X again to bring black to the foreground colour, and I can just mask that back out again. So it's given me control over how I mask each part of this out. Now, there are loads of ways you could have done a cutout like this. If I really wanted to be you know, finicky and accurate, you could use something like the, the, the pen tool to draw a really detailed... Um, outline around them but this is just a quicker method that I find just to get the result I'm looking for so there we go if I bring this back to full screen you can see now that we have them against the black uh, against the white background now as I said it's not the most accurate looking cutout but for the purposes we're going to use this is what we'll do I'm looking at it now and actually I don't like this bit with the hair there so I'm gonna actually just mask the flow of the hair out there. Let's bring B up there. Let's just bring that back down there. And we'll just bring it in like a few little wisps there. Let's make a really tiny brush. Just make a few little edges there. Bring it in a touch there, in a touch there. There we go, that's better. Right, I'm happy with that now. So, as you can see now, we had our original image like that. And there, now we've got the couple cut out. Now, if I'd known 25 years ago this is what I wanted to do, I would have shot the couple against a white, uh, a plain background to make it much easier to cut out. But, not only did I not know that 25 years ago, the technology that we're using today didn't even exist 25 years ago. So, this is where we are. So, I'm going to leave this now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge this down into one image so shift control E and now I've got a nice image of the two of them I'm going to control and J and just bring up a curves layer and just mellow it out a touch just like that so a slightly more muted thing so I'm going to merge those two down again and I'm going to save that as just put DVD okay so that's the image I'm going to use for the front cover now next thing we want to do now is to start actually creating a DVD cover now you can either take a cover out of a DVD and measure it up, but there are actual measurements, you can find them online, to what the size of a DVD 
cover um, needs to be. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a, a new document. So I'm going to press Control and N. You can come up here to File, and your top option there is New. And you can see the keyboard shortcut is Control and N. So if I press Control and N, sorry, why don't we do it? Control and N. And now it's going to give me some options for sizing for making a DVD cover. Now the width for a DVD cover is 273 millimeters, which is 10.75 inches. So I'm going to change this to 273 millimeters. The height for a DVD cover is 183 millimeters, which is 7.2 inches. So I'm going to change this to 183. I want the resolution to be 300 uh, DPI because this is actually going to be printed out. So 300 DPI is kind of your standard print resolution. So we're going to go with that and I'm going to click OK. And there we go. It's pulled up a document which you can see is in the size of if you took the a cover out of the cover out of a DVD box and laid it flat that's the dimensions and size it will be but what we need to do is to work out where the front of it is where the back of it is and where the spine of it actually lays so the first thing I'm going to do is I need to bring up uh, the, the rulers now you can do this by coming up to view at the top here and if you drop down you've got an option here that says rulers and you can see we've got a keyboard shortcut of control and R so I'm going to press control and R on my keyboard and now you see we've got a nice ruler at the side and the top going from zero there to 273 millimeters there and from zero there to 183 millimeters there and the first thing I want to do is I want to find the center point so if we divide a little bit of quick maths divide 273 divided by 2 and that gives us 136.5 millimeters so we need to mark out on this 135 136.5 millimeters. If you come across the ruler on this side and click and drag, you can see it brings a line in. And this is a guideline that we can use. And as you can see, as we're dragging it across, it's giving us the number value of where it is. It's in centimeters, so we need to translate that. So we will be looking at... 13 centimeters 13.65 centimeters so if I keep moving along there we go 13.65 let go and that's now given us our dead center line so the other thing we need to know now is how wide is the spine of the DVD when you've got the DVD in its box and it's folded the the back edge that would be on the shelf that's the spine and we need to know the width of that and the width of the spine for a DVD is 14 millimeters so we know this is dead center, so we need to place a line seven millimeters that way and seven millimeters that way. So let's go and grab another, we'll go to the edge here and we'll grab another guideline. And if we do 136.5 millimeters plus seven millimeters, that gives us 143.5. So we'll move along, and you can see the numbers in centimetres there. So we're looking for 14.35. Nearly there. There we go. So that's one edge of our spine there. And what we can do now is we can now move this, what we had as our centre line, back to the to the left seven centimeters and that will give us our spine so if we work out what that is we had 136.5 minus 7 is 129.5 so we're looking at 12.95 centimeters now so if we get our v tool you can see now once we're on the line it gives us a little shift and we're looking to drag this to the left now until we get to 129 sorry 12.95 centimeters Twelve point. there we go coming very close there we go so there we go that's our basic DVD cover setup we've got 
the right hand panel here which will be the front of our DVD we've got the left hand panel here which will be the rear of our, our DVD and we've got this center area here that we have the guidelines on which will be the spine of the DVD so once it's folded over then that's the bit that will run down the back edge of the of the DVD box so next thing we need to do let's reopen up I'm gonna get rid of the um, ruler lines now we don't need those so if we press control and R they will disappear there we go, we control now, but we've still got our guidelines here. Just to let you know, these guidelines are just a, a, a marker. They won't show up on any final print. The final print will be completely clear of lines or anything like this. So we're going to go back and open up the image that we just did to use on the DVD cover. Let's open that. There we go. Let's move that out to one side slightly. And using our move tool, I'm going to click and drag that image into this side of the box. I can close that one out now, now I've got it. As we can see, it's way too large, so I'm going to press Control and T on my keyboard, which will bring up our transform box. And holding down Shift, by holding down Shift, it'll actually keep everything in the same ratio. So we'll start to drag that down. If you didn't hold down Shift, you'd end up either stretching or squeezing them. You can see now we're starting to get that within the size that we're looking for. A little bit smaller. And I think I'll bring them slightly to that side. Okay. Just about there. Now if I'm fairly, maybe a little larger. Let's go slightly larger. Let's say there. Okay, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to press Enter. And now we have our image just where we want it. And we could use the, while we've got the move tool on, we could use the up and down arrows, left and right arrows to move it to exactly where you want. So there we go. That's part one. Now this is just how I, I, I make DVDs. You, you could use however you wanted. If you want to use a full color photo, if you want to use the, the you know, a, a full image across the entire thing, it's entirely up to you. This is just the style I use. But this will just basically show you the technique that I use to put together a DVD cover. Next thing we want to do is add some text. So we come across to our toolbar here and we've got letter T down here which stands for text. Click on that and that will open up our text tool. Okay, so we've we've got our text tool now and I'm actually going to what I'll do let, let's do this in in one font and then show you how to change the font as well while we're at it. So you can see we've got this weird little icon here. If I click on the image you can see it's put another layer over the top of our original background and picture layer so we've now got a layer now that we can type on this is completely separate so let's, let's do Leah and Lee's wedding 25th First three, I hope I've spelt that correctly. Edition. Now, if you click on the layer, that will make sure that that layer is now. You can now see that the the, the um, thumbnail on the layer is actually saying what the text is. So we've we've got our text layer there, and we can actually move that around wherever we want. Now, the first thing is I'm not entirely happy with that font, so. Re-engage your type tool, make sure that this layer is set, and at the top here, you can choose from the fonts. And what font you use will depend on what font you have loaded on a computer, but basically you've got access to all of the fonts that you have access to on your computer for Word documents and things like that. Photoshop has some text in it, but this will allow you to use any of the text that you have loaded on your computer. So I'm going to go down and choose one. I quite often use Century for wedding. So if I click that, you can see now that the text has changed. And that's nice. I, I like the look of the text. I think possibly we could see what it looks like slightly larger. So we'll come here to the, the point size and let's up it to 12 points. There we go. So again, if we, if we initiate our move tool 
by using V we can place the text wherever we want I think around there is good okay so basically as far as I'm concerned that's pretty much the cover the front cover complete next thing we want to do is look at putting the text along the spine so if you come across to your type tool again here if you click it to see what the options are we've been using the horizontal type tool which will obviously as the name suggests give us horizontal type but next down you have vertical type tool so if we click on that you can see now that our little icon lays horizontally as opposed to vertically in the first time and if we click in this space here because this is going to be the spine of our DVD so we're, we're going to use this area here so we click there and now we've got our cursor that we can start typing with and it, it's actually going to type vertically so let's do the same again let's go Leah and Lee's wedding 25th anniversary. Click the layer to initialize the type. If we go V for our move tool, we can now drag that up to where we need. And you can see now we've got the vertical type that when the DVDs in the box are sitting on the shelf, that's going to be along the spine. There we go. And the, the last thing I'll do is I'll, I'll add some text on the back here. But that's the basic setup for making a, a DVD cover. Once we print this out on, on an A4 piece of photographic paper, we can then cut it out to the size and it will fit within the, the standard DVD box, fold round and have the um, wording down the spine as well. So next thing, let's print this out and get on with putting it into the box. Okay, so that's the DVD cover complete. Now, the last thing I want to do now is just to print it out. So I'm going to control and P. So I've set up all the print settings. It's set to print on best photo. And I'm just going to click print. You can see on the preview there that it's masking out the size of the image on an A4 piece of paper. So we'll have to cut that out when we finish. But let's print that off now. So there we go. We've printed out our cover let's have a quick look you can see there that looks great I just need to trim it down so it'll fit the box now so we'll do that in a second so the final thing I want to do with this is I my printer is actually capable of printing onto blank discs so I've got some uh, blank printable uh, CDs that I can uh, put into the printer so I'm just going to make up the CD now so it matches the cover so I've got a blank here so I'm just going to pick the image that I created to make the DVD cover which is there for us click OK that will then open that image onto the for the disk as you can see it's too small so I'm gonna and I should have held down shift because otherwise that's what happens it gets all squashy so let's redo that hold down shift grab the corners I'm just going to resize this image so that it sits in the disk nicely. That'll do fine. I'm going to add a little bit of text. All I need to do now is to load a blank disk into the printer, print this on the disk, and we are golden. So let me just get the blank disk now. Right, so I've got these blank printable disks. Um, so th these will allow you to print inkjet on the top of the, on the disk itself. For me, it goes into this holder. Load the disk into the holder. Now I need to load it into the printer. Click print on the software. Click the dialog box for print. Gives me a warning because I've made the center size smaller than they, they require it to be. But Now the printer will print the disk for me. Uh, 
And there we go. One disc to match the cover that we've already made. All I need to do now is cut the cover out, fit it into the DVD box, and everything's complete. Apart from burning the um, files onto the onto the disc itself. So the final thing I'm going to do is just trim down the um, cover itself so it fits into the DVD box. And I've got these blank DVD boxes. I actually buy these in bulk online, and they work out really cheap. They work out about 10, 15 pence per per box. So it's a really cheap way of um, being able to produce the discs. So I just need to trim it down so it will fit inside the DVD box itself. Okay, so that's the cover trimmed down. Let's fit it into the box now. Really simple, slides into the plastic cover there. Slides down inside. So there we go, it's the cover of the DVD, back of the box, the spine, all done. Just need to finish it off. By adding our printed disc, popped into there safely. And there we go. One finished DVD in its custom cover. Fantastic. That'll do for now. I'm Dave Vickers. This is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.